Welcome back to Dog Health News. I'm Roberta Chatis, and today's show is exceptional because I have Warren Sato and his wonderful dog, who is so camera ready right now, taking a nap. This is Layla. Welcome to the show, Warren. Welcome, Roberta. Thank you for having me yes. on. Yes. It is a pleasure because we've known each other for a few years now, I think two or three mm -hmm. years, and I wanted to introduce people to what it's like to have a dog like Layla, who is a registered service dog and a certified pet therapy dog. But the first question is, how did you ever meet Layla? Well, first of all, she's the first pet I've ever had in my entire life other than goldfish. And I met her, uh, basically she grew up on the beaches of San Juan, very terrible childhood, let's say. She was foster cared and then she was flown up to Boston and eventually to the Northeast Animal Shelter in Salem. I had gone to the shelter about 10 times, saw dogs that were pretty cool, but I was waiting for something where it would be love at first sight. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden I see this wonderful dog who's playing with her toys and jumping up and down and that basically, you know, caught my attention, my love, and I can tell that it's also in the other direction. You know, I can sense Layla's energy already because most dogs that come into the studio are running around, they're really a little nervous, and Layla is as comfortable as a child, just a sleeping child here. She's I find amazing. That the way the dog is raised oftentimes can determine what the temperament will be. Mm -hmm. I try and be as calm as I can around her, even though I have a certain amount of uh, ADD and being bipolar. But if I exhibited that kind of behavior all the time, she would basically be the same way. Mm. So you started off with her at, for yourself because Correct. you needed a service dog. Yeah. Correct. So that's that's great. And what kind of training did she have to go through for that? Well, for that I did role playing concerning the uh, being bipolar. I tried to act as uh, depressed as I could, uh -huh. which sometimes isn't all that difficult, and act as hyper as I could. And she could detect that. She actually could even detect it before I would really know. It's sort of an early warning system. And in terms of the ADD, I would act confused, unfocused, or whatever else, and hmm. she picks that up. And she basically would alert me by head tilts like this or whines or uh, being a herding dog as well as a hunting dog sort of pushing me in back of the knees. Uh, and it's, it's wonderful. It and is wonderful. And that type of thing happens with other people as yeah. well. So I think right, in, right now the audience is probably wondering, what can Layla do? And I know we have some treats for her. So let's, let's see, let's put her in action. Okay. <laughs> Um, There's one. I, I will do one. Okay. Oh, maybe I should do that. Here, I will give an example for okay. the audience. I'm this, going to put the rest of the treats over here. Okay. So this is a toy that has some moving parts. It's wood, wooden, has little holes for it. And let me have a little uh, one of those treats, Warren. And I will put the treats in the little holes. Oh. Uh, well, it's okay. That's all right. Just one or two is fine. One little piece here. We have more of them. We'll see if she finds the one. But uh, since there's not much going on in this toy, perhaps we should try. She's already working on that one. I can see. So uh, she just knows that she has to flip, flip the little doors and find those treats. Right. Here's That's one what that she does. spins around. Mm -hmm. This one is probably the most difficult. This one is probably the easiest one. Okay, good. And in the meantime, tell me about your experience with the, uh, the um, facilities, the short-term and long-term memory Regarding facilities. The elderly, I usually go to short-term rehab, long-term rehab, adult daycare, memory loss, and assisted living. Mm -hmm. And with each of these, I'm sometimes in a common area, sometimes visiting people's rooms. Mm -hmm. I usually walk the halls. I get people who are having lunch or dinner to notice her. 
and um, people captivated by her. They, uh, they think she's beautiful, she's a very happy dog, she's energetic, mm -hmm. and she just automatically charms people. Well, she definitely is a charm. And do you bring these toys there to Sometimes I do. I like facility? to vary my, my visit and my presentation so that it doesn't appear to be scripted. Sometimes I'll do that. Sometimes I'll take my laptop and show them various pictures of my life and who mm -hmm. I am and try and encourage other people to talk about their lives and their pets. Mm. Yeah, it must open up some experiences for people that with, they've had dogs or they've lost definitely. dogs. They talk about the, the happiness, the painful situations, and it really helps them because there are other people they know around them. Mm -hmm. And as well as doing that, I have her do these tricks, and um, she'll run around sometimes. Mm -hmm. She'll go up to people, and hopefully they won't pull her tail or her ears or whatever, although uh -huh. she's pretty tolerant of that type of thing. Yeah, she's very, very... Uh Easy going. This dog doesn't really get agitated. I've never seen Layla do anything more than what I see here. And I can see, look how clever. She knew that she had to lift this piece up and not push it around. Of course, she probably knows this toy right. pretty well. Part of her training was also desensitizing her to noise and other disruptions and being uh, mishandled by people. And I would bring her to shopping malls and uh -huh. other places that are very busy with disturbing things happening around her. It's very important. And I've seen you at some of these facilities. What are the, what are the uh, behaviors of some of the people when they see Layla? Do they kind of stand back or do they want to pet her? As I mentioned, usually it's, it's instant attraction. I try and make sure that people who are allergic to dogs don't come close to her if possible, people who are afraid of dogs. Yeah. And I do that as sort of a screening. And people are instantly attracted. They come up to her, they pat her, they start telling stories about their dogs. Um, also what I do is I talk about proper greeting of dogs, uh, mm. scientific information about dogs, stories that I have. and. Um, I try and, you know, as I mentioned, vary what I talk about. And it's interesting. We talked about children and dogs and approaching dogs. What would you like to tell the audience about the best way to approach a dog in any situation? Sure. Yeah. First of all, when you approach a dog, it's best to approach a dog from the side rather than in front. Mm -hmm. They find that less intimidating. For example, wolves, you never look a wolf in the eye. It really gets exactly. them angry and agitated. Then you take your fist and you hold your fist up to the dog's nose like this. And the dog has the opportunity either of staying with you or walking away. And you really should honor that and not chase after the dog. If the dog stays there and wants to interact with you, then uh, you can talk to the dog. You can pat the dog, hopefully not on the ears or the leg or the head or the forehead. Oh, okay. and, um, and generally people are pretty good about that. Mm -hmm. um, as I mentioned, you know, try and subdue the noise and the running around and everything. Trying to put yourself in a place, dog, where you really wouldn't want somebody doing that around you. Right. That's exactly right. Is treat the dog like you'd like to be treated. Exactly. And don't, another thing is don't come up behind a dog to try to pat exactly. them. Exactly. Yeah, I've noticed that as well. Now, you also... You also talked to me about this story about a Great Dane and how the Great Dane was helping a child. Well, I first ran into a Great Dane as, who was a service dog outside the hospital on the grounds, and there was a lady who had a balance problem. Mm -hmm. And the Great Dane was always with her. And the Great Danes also can sense things ahead of time. That Great Dane could tell whether the person was leaning to the left or the right or perhaps falling. And the Great Dane would move to the side of the person to where she would be falling. Mm. And it really is incredible seeing this type of thing. And the reason why they're used as service dogs for people with balance problem is that they're tall, they're fairly heavy, mm -hmm. they're gentle, they don't need much exercise. And um, it's an incredible sight. The last thing I would have expected. Yeah, and it's, it's interesting to understand the types of dogs that are good at being a service dog. 
So for someone to hold on to and be uh, protected and supported, a bigger dog is a good, a good thing. Now, our wonderful Layla, we didn't really tell everyone what breed she is. Uh, why don't we talk a little bit about that? Sure. Actually, um, she was born on the beaches of San Juan, as I mentioned. Uh -huh. And our co I asked a lot of handlers and breeders and people at animal shelters just to get an idea of what the consensus was regarding what type of breed she is. She's a mixed breed. Mm -hmm. She's a combination of a Bazenji, which is B-A-S-E-N-J-I, and a Corgi. The Bazenji part, they're from the Congo. Yeah. They run around the savanna with tall grass. And... Um, she has all kinds of habits. She does some barking, mainly it's whining, screaming, yodeling, crowing, <laughs> that type of thing. Uh -huh. And it's, uh, it's pretty funny. To, uh, the other part, naturally, is the corgi, the queen's dog, although the dog has been banned from her quarters because of her old age and her balance problems. Mm -hmm. And it's wonderful. You know, she is very grateful for being rescued, and I'm very grateful for what she does to help me. Well, she's very sweet. She looks like she's trying to get more out of that toy. <laughs> I don't know whether there are any more pieces. There are actually eight pieces. compartments, and she has to twist it around to get oh, the, to the compartments. Oh, I didn't and get I that. And I think she'll probably get it out of all of the compartments. Yeah. Oh, she's, she's done this, a good job on that one. This is the simplest one. This actually was created by a lady from Scandinavia who very ingenious about dog behavior. Mm -hmm. And we, we do have some pictures that you can put up. Uh, the first couple of pictures that we have of Layla is uh, where she's actually on site in a facility. And you can, uh, you can see how beautiful her tail is in this picture. A oh, twisted that's, that's tail. that's the Bazenji tail. A curled tail, yes. And also... And now it's flat. Look at that. That's when she's very relaxed. That's when great. When she's out and about and she wants to signal to other dogs that she's aware of them and awake and whatever else, the tail flips up. Yeah. Strange thing is that I've never seen a dog with a curly tail like that where the tail bends to the right. Does it usually bend to the left? I usually be bends to the left for some reason. She's special. She is special. And she's very calm here. This is great. We're going to have to take her in for another visit. Who knows? I sure will. I know it. Now, I also wanted to cover ways for people to reach you. I'm sure that people are interested in knowing more about service dogs, and maybe they, they might want to have you come to their facility. Sure. I think on the screen it, it's my name and yes. my email. I'd prefer you use those. And then after we talk, perhaps I could show you my Facebook page, uh -huh. and even Layla has her own Facebook page. I'd be glad to talk about you know, her situation regarding my emotional challenges uh, as a service dog and also as a pet therapy dog. And mm -hmm. I'm a big fan of adopting dogs as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's great. Now... What haven't we covered? I know we talked a lot about some other subjects. What would you like to well, talk about? I'd like to branch out. Not only does she go to the elderly facility, as I mentioned, she also goes to hospitals, military hospitals, mm -hmm. uh, libraries where kids will actually read to her. They feel more comfortable reading mm -hmm. to a dog than a, a, a person. Um, I even bring her sometimes to scenes of natural or human disasters. And, oh sometimes even to colleges or other places where pre-exam there might be a lot of stress. Oh, yes, yes. And uh, she's actually even partially trained as a search and rescue dog, but because she's small and they'd be more wear and tear, I haven't had her do that type of thing. Mm-hmm. That's great. So, Layla, what about some of these toys? Do you like to play with these toys? What do you think? She's, uh, I know she was playing with this earlier. With this her is, toys, there are different types. This, this one doesn't have a squeaker, but what she'll do is... You can do that? You may see her uh, shaking the toy back and forth, and usually that's because that's what dogs will do to 
try and break an animal's neck and kill them. Mm -hmm. There are also squeaky toys where the squeaking is about the same sound an animal would make just before mm -hmm. a dog has killed it. And she has other types of things. This is just the tip of the iceberg. I have tons of toys. Tons of toys. I know. We had a whole bag of toys here. So let's see. Layla, what would you like to do? <laughs> she looks like she's so comfortable. Um, any advice for some, some of the, our audience? Well, you know, having a dog or a cat or maybe other types of animals mm -hmm. is a big responsibility. You have to be willing to take them out uh, at least a few times during winter, summer, rain, shine, whatever else. Naturally, I feed her very good dog food. I keep her safe. Um, mm -hmm. provide a lot of love and a lot of exercise. I live near a beach, so she's constantly running around the beach uh, chasing birds and that type of thing. I actually volunteer with her sometimes 30, 40 hours a week, and I kid around with some of the places I go to that I'm a volunteer, but I work for cookies because some of these places have really good snacks. <laughs> that is pretty funny. And uh, what was the other question I wanted to ask you? I wanted to ask you if someone wanted to have their dog go to school to be a therapy dog, is there any advice you want to give? Well, there are two adoptions. She's self-trained by myself mm -hmm. for both of the, the roles, and I had her registered and certified at a dog obedience school. Generally, people will have a dog trained it's very expensive. It can be perhaps as much as a one or two thousand uh -huh. uh, dollars, and even more for service dogs that do a lot of complex things. Um, when I trained her, it was more living with her as a companion than as a dog that I'd be shouting commands to and expect her to be dominated by myself. Mm -hmm. And she has a natural way of settling in. It's not like she's looking for you for direction. I've noticed that the entire time she's been here. She's pretty self-sufficient when it comes to that. And you can see that she probably would even fall asleep if she was there for a while. And she'd be motionless, except her ears would be rotating like radar to uh -huh. listen to various noises. And tell us about her ears. I noticed uh, we had a a conversation about them, and you, you call them bunny ears? That's her middle name that I gave her. her the Layla is from the Eric Clapton song, so she's Layla Bunny Ears Sato. And you can see they're pretty much like bunny ears. And at night, if I'm taking her for a walk, and this, she has a shadow on the ground, her ears are taller and narrower, and she almost looks like uh, the, the Batman profile. <laughs> That's so funny. Well, you get it very attached to a dog like Layla because you're with her 24 hours a day, and then she's working with you. So, what what does that do for you as a as a person with it? You know, you were dealing with her as your own service dog, and now you're sharing her. Well, as a service dog, she's very comforting. I get a lot of exercise, perhaps I wouldn't. It gets me out at various times a day, perhaps, where I'd be vegging in front of the TV or that type of thing. Mm -hmm. um, I would say it's about 50-50. She helps me. I help her. Um, and as far as what I provide for her, as I mentioned, you know, a very high quality of life. And hopefully, when she does pass, I'll never be able to say, I wish I had done this, or wish I had done that. That's a good point. You've done it all, and you obviously take amazing care of Layla, and she's taking amazing care of you. I think she's taking a little nap right now. I, I so. w I'm wondering, what, what are you going to do this summer in the future? Anything special planned with Layla? Well, unfortunately, this won't be with Layla. I'll be taking a short vacation with my daughter and son-in-law. I'm going to... Uh, Martha's Vineyard in Nantucket. Nice. This will be the longest period of time that I've been away from her. It'll be three days, maybe four days or so. Um, I don't have anything else scheduled, just a lot of time as a pet therapy dog. Mm -hmm. and, you know, I do some reading and TV and all those things. 
And when you're away from Layla, who takes care of her? Well, if I'm away from her for a, a few hours or so, she can usually be in my apartment. She mostly sleeps uh -huh. near the door, waiting for me to come back. And if it's a longer period of time, which has never happened, I'm actually having one of my neighbors uh, dog sit for her who has a dog of her own. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So that'll be good, because I'm sure she's going to miss you if you sure. are not around her. And the other question that always comes up to, in my mind is when I see a service dog and they are specifically for a person who's, who's blind or, you know, it's, it's usually for someone who's blind. Otherwise, I wouldn't understand what the issue is. But whatever the issue is, how do you approach a service dog like that? Well, usually a service dog, the way you want the service dog to be away from people, you'd have a cape or a vest on the dog. Mm -hmm. You would say, you know, service dog, pet therapy dog, or whatever. Um, and generally, that alerts people that they really should stay away. If it's a dog, for example, for a blind person, the blind person wants the dog to focus all their attention on them, not be diverted to somebody else. Otherwise, they could fall or run into something, whatever else. In my situation, since she's a pet therapy dog, I actually encourage people to interact with her. Mm -hmm. So I would say if you see a dog that is wearing some identification, it's best to stay away and at the, the very least to ask the companion or the handler whether you can approach them. Very, very good advice. That is excellent. And uh, I know Layla's been pretty quiet here. She hasn't growled. She hasn't whine she hasn't really barked does she ever bark well she barks when people are walking down the hall outside my door and uh, she barks if there is a a dog that she's never seen before if there's a dog that passes by my window on the first floor that she knows she'll start whining as if take me out i'd like to play with that particular mm -hmm. dog and she'll bark if she meets certain other dogs that she might feel are a, a, a threat to them. Mm. So, Warren, this work that you're doing, how does that make you feel to be able to bring Layla to a facility where people you might need some kindness? How, how does that, what does that do for you? Well, it makes me feel good that I have a purpose. Before, I had various careers where they weren't hurtful to us people, but it, it wasn't necessarily helping people at this level. Mm. And, you and can Layla gets a kick out of it because she enjoys people playing with her and paying attention to her. I'm sure, I'm sure. So it's a win-win for everybody. Exactly. Exactly, exactly. Have, is there any story that you'd like to share about a situation where Layla's gone into a facility and helped someone? Um, well, I'll give you an example. In the assisted living area, um, with people as a group, um, she's helped people who look as if they're catatonic, and all of a sudden, it's like the movie *The Awakening*. They mm -hmm. they start looking at her, they smile. If their arms are under a blanket, sometimes they remove the arms and they they want to play with her. Mm -hmm. Their eyes are open, they're smiling, and it's uh, quite something. And as I mentioned, or maybe I didn't mention. We do a lot of work with autistic kids where they haven't been talking or singing uh, for a day during their life. They play with her and they start talking and singing. And it's a miracle. It, it's really something to see that. Yeah. And I think you even told me that some of the children read to Layla, she, which is uh, very important. She's a great audience for kids who are reading, particularly in the library, if the kids have um, certain types of intellectual disabilities or uh, certain, let's say, self-esteem issues or whatever, it's very relaxing for them to play with her because she's not judgmental, she's patient, and um, sometimes kids will come out of their shell when they do that. See, I, th I think that that's a good lesson or a good strategy for anyone with their dogs, with children, with older people, I remember myself reading out loud to a dog that wasn't do, doing very well. And it's just, it was soothing for me. 
and it was soothing for the dog. I had a dog sure. and a cat both sitting on the floor, and I just read out loud. And I think that just that personal energy has to work. Definitely. And believe it or not, not only does it work with dogs in both directions, cats, there's sometimes a pet therapy ponies, pet therapy uh, llama. Some people feel they're pet therapy snakes. I'm not sure whether it goes that far. <laughs> but it, it just the idea of, of patting these animals, it lowers blood pressure, um, it lowers heart beat rate, um, a lot of different medical uh, impacts when they do that. Mm. And the other thing I'm noticing about Layla, although I'd love to have her in my lap, she's not a lap dog for uh, any no. real reason. She started out being wild, of course, at the beginning. She, she was just all over the place. And she was, wasn't house trained. I couldn't get her house trained for a matter of a few months. Uh, that was quite an accomplishment. But um, I like a certain amount of wildness in her. She likes to chase birds and squirrels and that type of thing. I wasn't looking for a lap dog. I wasn't looking for a, you know, a, per a dog that was sedentary, let's put it that way. Mm -hmm. And I think you mentioned to me it's not necessarily a good thing to be carrying dogs around in bags and your arms yeah. because it's confining, right? Right, and they're not really built for that. Um, Unfortunately, I live in a senior citizen facility, and there are some seniors that tend to treat their dogs like babies, and they really aren't. They really are, are meant to be set free, off the leash, mm -hmm. to walk and run and interact with people. And one thing I, I recently learned, although I sort of knew it intuitively, that it really is not a good thing to hug a dog because they feel confined. Mm. And so I, I have learned a lot about dog body language. When dogs are nervous, oftentimes they're using their tongue to lick their cheeks and the tail is, is going back and forth a mile a minute. So that if you're a, a dog owner, it's best to really watch what's going on. And even with cats, there are some people now who can train cats and they do tricks and they actually are taken outside on a leash and a harness or whatever. It's, Pretty unusual to see, but I think cats are also underestimated. I think so, too. Well, I must have felt the energy of you and Layla because I am more relaxed now than I've been for weeks. Isn't so, that great? Yes, and I think that that is a tribute to you, Warren, and the work that you're doing, and to Thank our Layla, who is... Now falling asleep down there, we can, we can show at the end here a picture of you on the beach with Layla. Sure. And on occasion, it is perfectly fine to hold a dog, just like you did, to just show that affection and to carry a dog. And I'm just delighted. I, I'm almost a little uh, yeah. teary-eyed here just thinking about what you do and what you're doing for a lot of people. So thank you very much, Warren. Thank you. Nice meeting you, Roberta. Yes. And thank you, everyone, for watching Dog Health News. We'll see you soon. I'm Roberta Chaitis.